you've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sleepcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? I'm doing all right, Jared. Doing all right. We had a great episode on our Monday, doing our Scarlet and Grade uh, for the Ohio State Notre Dame game. Feeling really good here, and we're going to talk about some collegiate chaos this uh, this episode here, or or rather the lack of that could have been. <laughs> a well, so, lot. There so, was I a mean, lo- what? What do we have? We have, I mean, we we have five top twenty-five losses, so that's that's great. N- none of them technically chaos because they all lost to other top twenty-five teams. Um, and it, there also wasn't a situation where like a a a, a twenty to twenty-five beat a top ten. I I'd, I'd, I'd have called that chaos. Um, it's hard to have chaos when there's so many ranked games. Exactly, Austin. And especially even then, a lot of the ranked games, the teams were very similarly ranked. You know, Ohio State and Notre Dame were right there with each other. Um, there wasn't a ton of separation between Oregon and Colorado. Um, and even then, maybe if Colorado won, you could have called it chaos, but that had been stretching it. Um, I think Bama proved they're not 100 percent dead yet. Their offense is out. Let's, let's let's talk about it. Alabama Ole Miss, uh, one of our top 25 losses. Um, but yeah, no, no chaos. Chaos over this week. Chaos went over this week. No, no there was one. There, no, there, there technically there was technically there was one. No, there wasn't. Clemson nope. almost was on. Clemson was playing the part of chaos and almost provided some chaos taking down Florida State. That didn't happen. By the way. There were six ranked on ranked, not five. Yep, correct. Okay. Alabama could lean into essentially the offense we ran with Braxton Miller at quarterback and maybe run the table. But they have Uh, to actually have a good, a quarterback that can actually run. They do. Their quarterback can run. He fumbles sometimes, though. Well. He doesn't run like Braxton, (laughs) but and an O-line. That, Matt that matt um i've never i've never thought i'd see the day where a nick saban alabama team would have such a uh desperately bad offensive line and it's not due to lack of recruiting they they got they got stars up front Mm -hmm. yeah it's just something just not looking right it's it's amazing it's amazing is their best hope i I think it's i think it'd be more of a jt offense for what it's worth it's a it's amazing what a what a good quarterback can do for a program here. A good. Yeah. That, that being said, if you watch the Alabama, we're talking about the Alabama Ole Miss game. If you watch Alabama Ole Miss game, if it was Ole Miss's offense against Alabama's defense and you were watching that game, did we touch on Baker, by the way, Jared? Uh, no. Um. If you watch that game and like I said, Ole Miss's offense was on the field and um and and Alabama's defense was on the field, you you were greeted to some amazing football. It was really some tremendous football. Uh, th- then they would switch sides and you saw Bama's offense against Ole Miss's defense, and that was some that was some shit football. Um Jared, you said there's no chaos. Did you not watch Buffalo, Oregon? Clearly the better team lost. I I I, I know you were kidding. <laughs> you you didn't you didn't have to you didn't have to point out the sarcasm on that one. Um yeah, Bama's Bama's fine. That's that's they're not, it. They're not fine. They're not fine, Jared. No, they're, they're okay. They're, <laughs> Their defense is so good, though. Legitimately, their defense is still so good. They're just totally inept on offense. And it's still a really top flight defense. I get that by Bama standards, by the standard in which Bama has set for itself. This is not a good football team. But objectively. This is still a very, very good defense. (laughs) I couldn't say very good team. 
Um, and, and, you, and you know they can they can probably get right back into it here because the rest of the uh, SEC West is not good, not good. The, the only really competition that I see here is LSU for Alabama, and maybe Alabama can sneak their way into the uh, conference championship game here. Yeah, I think I know the East isn't good, but but we know who's going to win the East. Yeah. (laughs) The Zoo best team in the SEC. Yeah. Um, Yeah, so we'll we'll, we'll watch Bama. Um, We'll see. I have to think that offensive line gets better as the season goes. Like, I just. Can you imagine a Bama not ranked? One. When was it had to been like Saban's first or second year at Alabama the last time that team wasn't ranked? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, looking at other games here, Jared. So Georgia, Georgia beat UAB 49-21. Uh, Michigan struggled with uh, Rutgers, but pulled away at the, in the second half 31-7. Texas, uh, neither to Georgia or Michigan, I thought looked particularly impressive in in their games. No, I I don't think so either. Um, it was, uh, I mean, at ha- UAB Georgia was what 14, 28, 14, 20, 20, yeah, 14, 14 and a half. Four. Yeah, um, and UAB is bad. Um, Rutgers gave Michigan a great fight through the first half. Um. And I think Rutgers is is fine this year too. I think Rutgers is not the worst team in the Big Ten East. I was just saying something. In fact, they're not one of the two worst teams in the Big Ten East, which I think is saying something if you're Rutgers. Does Georgia does two and one Georgia make it to the playoffs with their schedule? Probably right. But what about eleven and one? No one's good. Um. Yeah, where's yeah, the would... loss? Kyle asked. Say Tennessee. I, I one. I agree with Kyle. I don't see a loss on their schedule because their schedule is shit. Um. Two. Honest, on, honestly, if they lose one game, they make it to the SEC championship game and they win. They're in. Like yeah, hundred percent. The only way, if it were so, in in just say they lose. I don't see it, but it's a podcast. Jeez, Jared, that's fair. Let's say it's Tennessee. Um, and let's say that they're both one loss, um, but then Tennessee has the tiebreaker and Tennessee uh, goes to the SEC championship game, locking George out of the SEC championship game. I Maybe they could not make it. You know, if if Michigan and Ohio State are sitting there, one of them's undefeated, the other one has one loss, it's to the other one, and it was a close game. Both of those teams might make it. Um, I don't know. I, th- I feel I feel with the past success that Georgia's Georgia had, and I know those are previous seasons. This is a new season, and what happened last year shouldn't matter were you rank a team this year, but there's going to be that recent bias and they're going to give probably would give Georgia the, uh, the little leeway there. It's just my gut instinct. I I would agree. All right. So moving on here, Texas uh, takes care of Baylor. Florida state had to go into overtime to beat Clemson, which Clemson missed a field goal in regulation to beat Florida state, but Clemson go yeah. Clemsoning. Clemson screwed up a lot of clock management towards the end. Um, that that game could have ended differently. That was that was really the only time we got significantly close to a chaos scenario this week. Uh, that's that's basically it. Mm-hmm. Um. USC beat Arizona State 42 to 28. I didn't watch a single second of that because I was so late. 
<laughs> when that when that game played. Uh, Penn State shuts out Iowa 31 to nothing. The resurrection of Iowa's offense was uh, greatly exaggerated. Yeah. No, Yidis Dabo has fallen off. Um, there, there is no falling off. He is, he is straight fall in off. It's mm-hmm. we're we're Since we're in, we're in the past tense now, Yidis. We're we're living in yeah. the past tense. Kyle Since is Lawrence Florida left. State legit. He's specifically asking you. Austin wants to know your opinion. Is Florida State back? Are they legit? Uh, they're a good team. They're are are they back? I mean, you look at the resume. Okay, they got they got a good win against LSU, and mm-hmm. and then on paper it looks like it's a good road win against Clemson. But on paper, it's not because they're an unranked team. True, they went to overtime against an unranked team. I, th- I think it's an impressive good. brand. The, the the only thing that makes that win impressive is the laundry. Yeah. It's because it, we're conditioned they're they're to good. think that Clemson Flor- is good. Florida's, yeah, Florida State's a Florida State's good. I, I think they're good now. Are they? Are they? Are they great? Time will tell, but I, I think they're a good team, and they if they can get their stuff together. I yeah, they they definitely would pose a big challenge. Penn State game Florida. could be a top five six matchup in late October. Does a loss there fuck us? Even if we win out, no. Don't lose twice. Which rule mm-hmm. is that, Austin? I feel like that's pretty high up there. Don't lose twice. If you lose that game close. If you lose close to Penn State, but then you turn around and you beat Michigan. Is it rule 12? Really? It should be higher. Um, They're not ranked. I don't know why I think it should be higher. Um, But the the, the point being. As we know, these are chronological. Uh, That's debatable, but we don't we don't need to get into that right now. Um, True, but. Penn State and Ohio State both getting in uh, doesn't look like the CFP would do it. Why not? They put both Ohio State and Michigan in last year. Mm -hmm. What's the difference? Listen, we're moving towards a power two system. We, 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 We need to get really comfortable with the idea that we're going to have like and probably not this year, but maybe next year where it's going to be two big 10 teams and two sec teams in the playoffs and that that will become normal. That's going to be normal very soon. Actually, it won't be because we're moving to a 12 team playoff, but if we weren't moving to a 12 team playoff, that would be very normal. Mm Hmm. All right, um, moving on here, Jared. I mentioned Penn State beat Iowa 31 nothing. Washington, Enix, our favorite former Hoosier quarterback, uh, leads Washington to a 59-32 victory over Cal. Kyle, I keep saying no one is good. I, I've said it a bunch of times. No one's good. No one's good. No one's good this year. Everyone's vulnerable. Everyone has weaknesses. No, no, no one's great this year. Everyone bleeds. Washington has a good offense. Well, how are we feeling about Washington? Is Washington has a very good offense. Penix about to take home the Heisman. Uh, I, I know we have a very, very, very recent example of this, but September Heisman's almost never win it. He has he has sixteen hundred yards passing through four games, Jared. Well, <laughs> and sixteen touchdowns. Austin says, "I love how Penix was a meme." but he's legit. Yeah. In Indiana, he was a meme, Um, but he grew up, he moved out West um, to where the mighty, you know, where the, I am, you know, I'm (laughs) I'm not going to say that joke. I don't know why I've made so many Penix jokes before, but that one I decided to, to not follow through on. Um, Cal great crazy numbers from Penix early on here. 
75 percent yeah, completion tulsa right. michigan state cal worth noting this is not a murderer's row of teams and and, and like credit to washington they didn't know michigan state was going to be this when they scheduled them but this <laughs> i wish i had a crazy penix number jesus christ austin that one broke me um <laughs> God damn it. That that's my entire train of thought. Well, well, derailed. Washington, it either bottom line, Washington, a very good offense. Yeah, yeah, they're putting they're they're letting up some um some points on defense here, but it, yeah, it, it's a good it's a good Washington team here. It's a very good um Washington team. Very good Washington uh, offense. But again, I so, have to I have to point out the schedule. It's not impressive. Of, uh, Speaking of teams who are not good or have proven who are not good, uh, Colorado get there, yeah. um, get taken to the woodshed okay, by yeah. Oregon. It was That's... 42, it was 42 nothing going into the fourth quarter, it was 35 nothing going into halftime. Oregon, Oregon yeah. pulled up. Um, Here's the thing. They were never good. They're an average college football team, which is really good for them. I mean, it is unless you become a joke. When you put yourself up on a pedestal like that and then you get humiliated like that, you risk becoming a joke. And when you become known as one, a joke and two, a program that will unapologetically cut your kid from the team and take a scholarship away. How do you continue to attract talent? That's, that's the problem. When, when you, when you become known as a joke and, a, and as a ruthless manager of your roster, we all know what managing the roster means. What point does that start to impact recruiting? Yeah. All right. Um, moving on to other teams here, Jared. So Utah beats UCLA 14 to 7. Utah not looking not looking all that great. I know I know that they've had UCLA also look good. I think UCLA is a sneaky decent team. But I mean, I know Utah. Utah is still without um, without their uh, starting quarterback. But boy, their their offense they're, they're finding ways to win here. But their offense is just if you didn't not watch that great. If you didn't watch this game, um, seven of those points were scored by Utah on the very first play, and yes. it's it's worth noting that the very first play was run by UCLA. <laughs> Uh, it was a pick six <laughs> yes. right from the beginning. Rising makes the offense go. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Yep, absolutely. Uh, LSU uh, squeaks by Arkansas 34 to 31. Here's another game that uh, chaos almost almost had. Yeah. Yeah. I said before that the Florida State Clemson game was our only real opportunity at chaos. Well, LSU almost dropped the ball against Arkansas here. Here's the problem. If you're Florida State. You're you're crowning the crowning jewel of your schedule is LSU, who has not looked good. No. Um, So that starts to call into question. Okay, so how good is Florida State actually? Good question. Yeah. So every once in a while, every once in a while, you get one of those games where at the beginning of the year, it's two huge brands and it's a great game. And everyone's like, oh, my God, what a game. And but then everyone forgets about it six weeks later because it turns out both of those teams actually just sucked. Mm-hmm. Starting yeah. to wonder kind, if that's Florida State LSU. Kind, kind of funny how things work, work out that way. Um. We already talked about Alabama beating Ole Miss. 
uh, the the Pack Two Championship game of Wash of 24, 21 ranked Washington State beating out fourteenth ranked Oregon State thirty eight to thirty five. Washington State had this game going into the fourth quarter. They were up thirty five to fourteen, and then Oregon State put up twenty one points in the fourth quarter. But the field goal was the difference for the Cougars. And these two teams are going to be fantastic in the Mountain <laughs> Wets next year. <laughs> the Mountain West sucks. Yeah. How, how was how was that one, Austin? I changed it up for you. Uh, Oklahoma uh, beat Cincinnati twenty to six. Don't really have much to say to that, other than okay. Uh, <laughs> Uh, North Car- North Carolina beats Pittsburgh forty one to twenty four. Duke wins. Miami wins. Tennessee wins. And Florida struggled, but they end up did beat uh, the mighty forty ers of Charlotte. Kyle twenty two to seven. I'm going to keep asking you this question until you give me an answer. As our and resident I don't know North the, Carolina expert, I why don't on know earth the is a team on the east coast of the country called the forty ers The 49ers were a bunch of miners who traveled to California to find gold. Why would a team on the East Coast be called a 49er? It would be like if the the basketball team of Los Angeles were called the Lakers, despite the fact that it's a desert. It doesn't make any sense. The nickname 49ers derives from the fact that the university's predecessor, Charlotte Center, of the University of North Carolina, was saved from being shut down by the state in 1949. Yet, I can't help but notice that their logo is a pickaxe. Yeah. All right, and two other two other games here, just a note. That, that, uh, that, that feels... Go, go, that feels that that feels like a stretch. Because the logo is yeah. a pickaxe, Kyle. The logo is a pickaxe. I know. I know. It's more I, like, I, hey, that San Francisco team's kind of good, right? Let's try and ride their coattails. I don't live in Charlotte. I can't answer that. All right. Um, the last last two games here, um, going to the Big Ten here. Indiana needed four overtimes to beat Mighty Akron, the Zips. Good job, Indiana. When 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 does when do they play Rutgers? Because I just I, I I need to watch that crown be passed for for the worst team in the Big Ten East. Uh-oh, a miner was chosen as the mascot as a nod to Reed Gold Mine nearby Concord. Yada 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 yada. So it's just it's just a coincidence then that they're called the 49ers and that they found and that they also just happened to buy totally unrelated coincidence to to pick a miner based off of the reed gold mine yep this definitely doesn't sound like they came up the came up with the name first and then an excuse excuses to justify the name later totally not what happened um indiana plays rutgers uh, in about a month. Too late. I want that now. All right. In the last game here, Jared, your Golden Gophers. Not my Golden your, Gophers. Your Golden Gophers. Your Charlotte 49ers. Led up 21 points to Northwestern in that fourth quarter where it went to overtime and yeah, Minnesota lost to Northwestern. 37 to 34. Uh, you you got it. You got to fire PJ Fleck at this point. You, 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 you Fleck's done. He yeah, has, that's, that's a very, that's he, a very, he has now been at Minnesota mess. for a while. And, mm-hmm. um, he has gotten them all the way up to sub mid. Somehow it lasted, except it wasn't. Yeah, it's just, it just was. 
It was only fun because he makes a lot of noise and draws a lot of attention to himself. He's he's a poor man's Deion Sanders. PJ Fleck is just a poor man's Deion Sanders. That's all he is. He's he's a self promo guy. He's all about himself and me and look at me. Um, and it's 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 time it's it's time that we uh, and by we I mean those of us in charge of the University of Minnesota. Uh, call an end to the PJ Fleck experiment and just just do literally anything else at this point. Yeah. And they play Texas next week. Good God. <laughs> Good God. All right, and we got um, any other games? Any other games you want to talk about, Jared? Um, no. If you want to hear our thoughts on Ohio State Notre Dame, we did an hour on it on Monday. You can go listen to that. Um, I don't know. Kyle, Notre Dame still a playoff team, yes? If they run the table, they, they could be, yes. Yes, it's, it was only a three-point loss. Yeah, they, they definitely are. It's their playoff quality team. Unfortunately for them, they have a hell of a schedule coming up. What 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 is Notre Dame's schedule? Uh, if they, they run the play, table, they're they, in they unless play. the fourth spot is between them and Ohio State. That's a that's a decent point, Austin. At Duke, they play at Duke, who is surprisingly at, good. At, at Louisville, not home not that to great. US home to USC. That's 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 a tough pull. Home to Pitt, at Clemson, home to Wake Forest, and at Stanford. Having Pitt sandwiched between USC and Clemson might be sneaky. The USC game, if they can win that USC game, they're still a playoff team. I, I think I think they. Yeah, we're, we're almost done, Matt. You're good. Duke through Clemson stretch is tough. I agree, Austin. I wholeheartedly agree. Um, I think they're a playoff quality team. But I, I think that if they were cowards, if they were total cowards like Michigan and scheduled nobody, then they could have been a playoff team. I said it. I said it. So what? Want to fight about it? All right. Uh, we do have one question here, Jared. We have one question from Nomad. Is the Pac-12 the best conference in football this year? No. Um, Explain. <laughs> I see three Big Ten teams in the top ten, and yes, there are also three Pac-12 teams in the big in the top ten. Um, I guess technically ten in the top ten, with Utah sitting at ten. Um, but it is still three. Yes. As Austin is pointing out three big 10 teams in the top six, half of the top six. Yes. That's, that's the difference. That's the difference right now. The big 10 has three teams ranked higher than the highest pack 12 team. So the, so the big 10, big 10 is top heavy, but then that's, that's it. There, there's no one else in the Big Ten. Right. But, but, but we also have to consider this. If this were next year, the Big Ten would have number two, number four, six, seven, eight, and nine. Is like, that's next year. Uh, that is next year. But it's it's not next year. But if it were next Nomad, year, and Nomad, and Nomad's question was this year is the Pac-12 the best? I understand this year. what the question is, and I said Ohio State has half of the top six. Excuse me, the Big Ten has top of the. Has, you know, combine the two things I said wrong, put them together, and pretend I said it right. The Big Ten holds half of the top six. Discussion over.
it, it's it's kind of funny seeing the SEC here. No, let's let's just put in four SEC teams at the bottom of the AP twenty five there. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it, it, here's the thing. It doesn't matter. No, it, it doesn't. Here's the thing, it doesn't matter. Um, and like I said, if you fast forward this to next year, the Big Ten would hold one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven of the top ten. The Big Ten, the 2024 version of the Big Ten. Where's the seventh one? Michigan at two, Ohio State at four, Penn State at six, Washington mm-hmm. at seven, USC at eight. Oh, I'm sorry. That's Utah. I Utah and UCLA played each other. I got confused. Um, yeah. Utah does feel very big Ten. I just I was cro- I was crossing up USC and Utah in my head because they played each other. Um I think that is it, Jared. Anything else? Utah, by the way, is not a bad candidate to join the Big Ten. It legitimately, I think, would make a great fit. Just for what it's worth. Um, If the rate of the ACC doesn't happen in the future the way I expect it to, I, I don't think it would be ridiculous to see Colorado and Utah um jump the ship from the big 12 into the big 10. I don't think that's a totally outlandish thing that could happen. All right. Um, But I still think the rate of the ACC is more likely at this time. Because, yeah. because like as much as Utah does feel like a big 10 team, you know who else really feels like a big 10 team? UNC and Virginia. UNC and Virginia both feel very I Big Ten agree. to me. I agree. But anyway, that's a whole that's a that's a those are wasteland topics. Those aren't those aren't today topics. Um I'll be in Chapel Hill come basketball season. It would be fun. All right, that's it. That's the end of the show. Um, yada, 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 Discord server, yada, 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 Patreon. Um, Kyle, do you have anything in Kyle's corner? Uh, no, we'll see. really? Cool CJ, <laughs> cool CJ Stroud stat? Yeah, oh, yes, CJ Stroud. Yeah, not only did he get his first uh, NFL win here, but yeah, he's, he's leading or right at the top of... Um, Passing yards for all quarterbacks, not just rookies, but all quarterbacks through through three games, and yeah, over a hundred and over one hundred and twenty attempts passed so far, and zero interceptions, which I believe you told me is the all time record. Most most passes yeah. attempted without an interception. Yes. Yeah, I'm trying to I'm trying to find it here. Did, did, did. Yeah, Stroud attempted 121 passes through three games, uh, completing 65 percent and zero picks. That's insane. That is utterly insane to throw 120 your first 120 some passes in the NFL and have none of those intercepted. It, I mean, it's literally never been done before. What yeah. what else do you need to know about how insane that is? Yep, yep. All right, Kyle, that's it. That's the end of the show. That is it. All right, tonight's ending music is a, I believe they're out of Dayton. Uh, they're called Abertooth Lincoln. So um, that's the ending music for today. So with everything being, with all that being said, that's what I normally say. With all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, supports local podcasters once again. Abertooth Lincoln.